Okay, thank you. So <coughs> now we move into smartphones and talk about this tremendous growth that we're seeing. Um, a few years back, we uh, launched a vision within Ericsson about um, the notion of 50 billion connected devices by 2020. Uh, with what we heard about connected cars and bikes and homes, I'm sure we are well on our way to get there. No, I haven't done out counting it yet. Um, but what we really see is that anything that benefits from being connected will be connected in the future. And that is, of course, going to change a lot. And looking down into smartphones more specifically, we are uh, deploying networks basically in all parts of the world. And, and as of now, almost 50% of the traffic from smartphones goes through an Ericsson network. So we have calculated and based on that measured in many networks about how much smartphones there are and what we see in the future. So looking forward, um, we basically see tremendous growth of smartphones. Right now we are basically having 1.1 billion smartphones in the world. Um, and that has continued to increase. Just quarter three of, of this year, 40% of all the world's mobile phones were smartphones. We're still at a very low installed base. Only 15% of the fo world's phones are smartphones. So there's a tremendous increase coming. And as you see in the graph here, we have both smartphones, mobile PCs, tablets, and, and routers. And, and the majority of these are smartphones. So by 2018, we see some 3.3 billion smartphones in the world, three times the amount we have today. And a majority of those is coming to be, will, will be in Asia Pacific region. So this will tremendously change. We'll get more and more people that are accessing internet in this way. And video is actually the, one of the biggest contributors to traffic uh, within smartphones. And as we're basically seeing that almost half of the time watching video on a smartphone today is used outside of the home. So people are looking at video clips all over the place. Um, we did a consumer lab study uh, basically looking at, at where people are using their, their smartphones. And 50% of, of the respondents having a smartphone say that they um, are using it in bed. Basically, people are looking at the smartphone, the first thing they do in the morning and the last thing they do in the morning, or in the evening, before they go to sleep. That's how fundamentally it has changed our, our way of living. So, a few more numbers of what we believe is going to be in, uh, happening by 2018. 14 times more data generated by smartphones than already today. And we've already seen a lot of data. People are downloading apps, using things all the time. We will see 14 times that by 2018. Um, over 85% of the world's population will have access or coverage by high-speed internet, 3G, as we call it. Uh, today, it's around 50%. So basically, the whole world will connect, uh, be able, uh, especially all the cities, where uh, they will have 3G internet access, high speed. Um, 1.6 billion mobile subscriptions will be on the next generation uh, technology, 4G, WLT, having access to maybe 100 megabits per second download speeds on these smartphones. And in general, some 9.3 billion mobile subscriptions in all. And then you can quickly calculate that's more than the number of people. Well, yes, people have more than one device. People have more subscriptions. So it's tremendously changing. Uh, so looking then what, what this might mean, um, well, I would basically argue that we will see a new kind of creativity coming, uh, where people are, are communicating over the smartphones in a new way. If you look at the old, and, and, and then basically I think um, Greg mentioned a couple of these old way of, of having offices. Uh, it was by and for the few, it was the genius, it was the people sitting in the lab doing the monologue. They were the one doing the innovation. Today, it's everyone. Everyone is part of the community. Everyone is, is uh, contributing to continuous torrent, sending uh, data from bikes and sensors into the big picture. Um, and it's going to be the mosaic of small ideas that actually changes uh, what will happen in the future. So I would argue a little bit that, that the uh, office creativity maybe have also will be complemented by the virtual creativity. Um, so let's be a little bit provocative and think, okay, so what will this mean then by a number of years forward? L let's look at the 2025 city. Uh, well, well, let's see here. Um, universities are accessible to all digitally. What if that would be true? 
That would completely change the notion of education, I'm sure. Half of all the basic health care can be delivered remotely over your smartphone. You never again need to search for a parking space. Why would you? All the information is out there somewhere. It should be possible to get that over your smartphone. Electric cars we talked about, they should be able to be charged anywhere. Why have a specific charging pool? Uh, you should be able to, and we have actually done tests together with, with a number of, uh, or, or one car manufacturer with Ericsson, um, that uh, uh, trying to then make sure that the charging bill ends up on your bill. You don't need the charge pool, really. The technology is there, at least. It takes only 10 minutes to start a new business, and you can do it from your smartphone. You have an idea, you start a, a business, and you're up and go. And you always know your arrival time ahead of the commute. Today, we know when the bus comes. Maybe we could know when we arrive all the time, taking into account um, traffic jams, taking into account what actually will, will be there. I mean, the information is out there. So it's just a matter of getting it together. So anything that benefits from being connected will be connected. And this um, is what we uh, call the network society and what we talk about it in Ericsson. Thank you. Thank you. What I thought was most uh, clearly in, in the very last message is you're still talking about the city, which is network, and which will give you all these opportunities. Therefore, we, we're still talking about territory and space. In the UK, we recently rolled out 4G, and it was uh, coming to live in cities. And it will take a while until it will arrive in the countryside, if ever. Uh, could you just comment on this? How much is this technology still dependent on the density we have heard about on the city sort of foundation before we move? Yeah, I think it, it very much is. Uh, creativity, I would say, is local. The markets are global in the sense that you need to sit close to each other. Uh, we actually seen if, if a group of people that go out for a dinner, they actually communicate over what they talk about over the dinner at home over Facebook at, uh, later on. So technology actually increases the need to meet. It actually the conversation continues virtually, but you need to meet as well. So I don't think that the city, the notion of cities goes away by technology. And I think that's what we've seen mm. a lot. But but the other hand, I think that actually it's emphasized by it. Because of humans or because of the technology itself, the infrastructure that goes with it? Well, I think we, we as humans uh, have a need to meet. And I think you can never really replace that. You can complement it and you can uh, take away a lot of the traveling need for using video conferencing, things like that. But eventually you need to meet as well. So it's a combination. John, maybe. Uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, I completely agree about your last point about the importance of what I call meetingness and the ways in which meetingness kind of forms and reforms patterns of living, cities, uh, uh, settlements, and so on. And it's hard to so far imagine massive reductions in meetingness. But I did wonder whether the sorts of things that you were so enthusiastically describing uh, are good. And uh, in, if we look at the history of socio-technical change, often the, win the, the system that wins is not necessarily the best system. So, for example, the uh, petroleum-generated car might not have been the best system, but it was the one that won out, partly for some very particular things happening very early on. And, of course, we might wonder whether the kind of over, I don't know, digitization and networking that you characterize is, is good. And, indeed, whether, it's, whether there's any good evidence that that produces better lives yeah. and, indeed, whether those lives lived in that networked way are significantly superior to uh, other, p other ways of organizing our connections between people. Yeah. Uh, no, it's a completely relevant question, and uh, I wouldn't put any value on either or. I, I just noted that technology mm. can do all of this. Whether yeah. we want it to do that, we need to take a, 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 a decision, basically, as humans, how we want to evolve this. Yeah, I, th I think this is a very good point to now get to our last speaker, to Tom, who will introduce his notion of the participation economy. Over to you, Tom.